All-Star game. It's been home to the Final Four. It's been home to championship tennis and world championship boxing. And for the last 35 years, it's been the home to the Houston Astros. Welcome to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Matt Vaskersian, Bill Schroeder, producer-director Gary Kirby. The Brewers looking to snap out of an eight-game funk here in what has become a house of horrors for the Milwaukee Brewers, the Houston Astrodome. Today, they'll take some swings against right-hander Chris Holt, making his first start on the mound since late in 1997. This is how manager Phil Garner, a native Houstonian, aligns his Brewers tonight. Here's tonight's Brewers century starting lineup. Fernando Vina at second base. He's had at least two hits in each of the Brewers' first four games this season. He'll lead off at second base. Marquise Grissom in center field had one of the two RBIs last night at the Dome. He bats number two. At third, Jeff Cirillo. He's hit in all four of the Brewers' contests so far this year. He bats in the three spot. Jeremy Burnett's in right, bats cleanup. The former Astro, an Astro for three years, Sean Berry at first base, bats number five against his old team tonight. Catching is David Nilsson, batting number six. Making his second straight start at shortstop is Jose Valentin. He's in the seven hole. Left fielder Jeff Jenkins bats number eight. And tonight's Brewer starter pitcher Bill Pulsifer bats number nine. And a look at the Wisconsin Lottery starting defense for the Houston Astros. You see Ricky Gutierrez at shortstop. He's the regular shortstop. Had last night off. You can see the star by Mitch Molesky, the young catcher, right-handed switch hitter, I should say, that he can flat out hit the baseball. He hit 353 in AAA last year. So big offensive potential out of the young catcher. And on the mound, a big hard-throwing right-hander out of Dallas, Texas, Chris Holt. Chris Holt, 27-year-old right-hander, 6'4", 205. Third round draft selection by the Astros in June of 92. Those are his 1997 numbers. He did not pitch in 1998 while he recovered from two separate procedures on the throwing shoulder. A rotator cuff tear that was made even worse by the first surgical procedure. Chris Holt had to sit around in rehab for over 12 months. He is happy to just be back out there pitching competitively today. Home plate umpire tonight, Charlie Relliford, Jeff Kellogg, Sam Holbrook, and Dana DeMuth round out the rest of the umpiring crew. Fernando Vina to start it. Vina, Grissom, and Cirillo tonight here against Chris Holt and the Astros. We mentioned as we set the starting lineups that Fernando has at least two hits in each of the Brewers' first four games this season. And he takes strike one from Chris Holt. Well, and obviously, Fernando tied for the league lead in multi-hit games in the top ten in batting average in the National League. He scored only one run, and that has got to change for the Brewers. They need to get on the board early tonight. Lined into the corner, and a fair ball into the corner in left. Hidalgo goes to chase it. Fernando Vina starts another ball game with a base hit, this time for extra bases. Well, it looked like a fastball out over the plate, and Fernando Vina, watch that front shoulder. That baby does not pull off at all, right at the pitcher, and he makes a nice swing getting on top of that pitch on the outside corner and slicing it down the left field line. A like good piece of hitting by Fernando. Fernando's first double of the year. He's hit in all five games so far for the Brewers. That's the third time he has opened a ball game with the base hit. Here's Marquise Grissom now. Marquise was one for four last night. He and Fernando Vina had the two runs batted in. The Brewers got off to a 2 nothing lead last night. They watched it evaporate until finally the Astros came up with the game winner in the bottom of the eighth. What a heartbreaking loss here in Texas for the Brewers. Grissom's got to get Fernando to third base. Lays down the bunt. It's a good one. Holt's going to just apply the tag on Grissom, wisely so, as Bagwell was slow to get to the bag. Bagwell went after the baseball, and it was actually Craig Biggio that was forced to cover, so Chris Holt helps himself out with some good defense. Not a good job by Marquise Grissom. He really didn't feel comfortable in his ability to hit a ground ball to the right side of the infield, so he does the next best thing, drops down the bunt. No excuses in a situation like that. You've got to get the runner to third base. So a fly ball can get the Brewers on the scoreboard early. Jeff Cirillo the batter. Jeff was one for four with a double last night against Sean Bergman in the Astros. Just underway from Houston tonight.
Brewers faced Chris Holt here in 1997. That interleague play series played here in early September. The Brewers won two of three there. Believe it or not, that was the last time they won at the Astrodome. It has not been a very friendly place for the folks from the upper Midwest. The Brewers have had a tough time here. They have good pitching, good defense, and the Houston Astros can score runs. A tough ball club, particularly here at home. The Brewers have to change that. They need to score early and often tonight. And hopefully those killer bees stay cold. Pena third base, one ball, one strike on Jeff Cirillo. In that start, Chris Holt went seven innings against the Brewers. It was on September 1st of 97. He was a 3-2 loser. Pitched very well, allowed only three runs on seven hits. But the Brewers were able to beat him that night. Three balls and a strike now to Cirillo. Jeremy Burnett's waiting on deck. Holt out of the windup and it's fouled at the plate. Jeff Cirillo had an at bat last night late in the ball game against the Astros closer Billy Wagner. They left a lot of people scratching their heads including Jeff. We saw him today and, and he could not remember the last time he struck out swinging on three straight fastballs. Right down the middle, all three of them, but Billy Wagner throws about 98, 99 miles an hour. If anybody's going to be able to throw a fastball by, it's going to be Billy Wagner. That 3 1 pitch is very unlike Jeff Cirillo, got tied up in on his hands, normally looking fastball in those situations. Here's a full count pitch home to Cirillo, and that one misses inside ball four. So runners at the corners now for the Brewers, and an opportunity for Burnett. They got to believe that Chris Holt is all nerves, a bundle of energy out there, hasn't pitched in over a year. Brewers have to take advantage of that. Hopefully, he's going to be feeling a little bit too strong. That sinker isn't going to be sinking. You see, he's having trouble throwing strikes. Vina at third base, Cirillo at first. A chance for the Brewers to get on the scoreboard here early. One gone to the top of the first inning. We're just underway tonight. Burnitz was hitless last night, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts as the fastball from Holt stays high. And Bernie off to a slow start. He did hit a home run on opening night in St. Louis, but since then it's been a cold spell for Jeremy. Striking out a lot. Jeremy's going to strike out, but situations like this, he needs to cut down that swing and drive in the run. Slicing towards the seats. Caminiti's chasing, and it's into the stands. Horrible play in the stands. Are you kidding me with that play? So runners stay at the corners. Last time Chris Holt was out there during a regular season game, final day of the season in 1997, he got an inning of mop-up work in, pitched one relief inning in a 5-4 Pittsburgh Pirate victory here at the Astrodome. As you said, it's been some time. This is a day that Chris Holt's been looking forward to for some time now. A lot of times that can work against the pitcher. Feeling a little bit too strong, throwing the ball too hard. Two and two to Burnett's. That's why it's important for the Brewers. They're in a situation where they can score a couple of runs early. Get him while he's down. You don't want to start allowing him to feel comfortable out there. Sean Barry, Phil Garner. I'd like to score some runs tonight. Two balls and two strikes to Bernie. Former Astro Sean Barry waiting on deck. Holt from the stretch. Well, that one just misses. Bernie leaning out across the plate, thinking that Holt's going to go away, and Holt came inside, just missed, just a little bit low. As he did with Cirillo, he goes full to Burnett. There's a swing and a high fly ball lifted into left. The dog goes there for this one. He makes a catch. Vigna tags up at third, and that brings home the run. Nice work by Jeremy Burnett. 
And that's exactly what he had to do. Once he had two strikes on him, you shorten the swing up a little bit, do whatever you can to elevate the baseball and score the run. A nice short stroke, not trying to hit the ball too hard. And the Brewers on the board here in the first inning. Cirillo stays put at first. Brewers on the board. They are the first to score tonight as they were a night ago here at the Dome. Now it's Sean Berry. RBI for Bernitz, his third of the year. Berry was one for three with a walk last night. Came through with a ninth inning base hit. That really climaxed a great at bat against Billy Wagner. That was really a battle. Barry in there fouling off pitch after pitch. He finally fought him off. He was actually fooled. And on a check swing, drove a Billy Wagner full count pitch into center field for a base hit. He gave the Brewers an opportunity with man on third base and two outs to tie the ball game. Didn't happen. But Sean Barry's been swinging the bat very well. Driving the baseball, average up there in the 350s. Just what he's been asked to do for the Brewers all season. Two balls and no strikes. I had a chance to talk to Sean before the ball game today. He said he was real nervous yesterday. You take a look at David Nilsson. First day back in his old haunts here with the Astros. First thing he did went over to Houston Astros locker room, said hello to everybody, got it out of the way. And he thought about baseball. Chris Holt is not on a pitch count tonight. One may guess that perhaps they'd be looking at him closely, having not thrown in a big league regular season game since 97. That's not the case. He's able to go and air it out at full speed tonight. 3 0 home to Barry. Misses high and tight once again. A four pitch walk to Sean Barry. The natives in the dome a little bit restless tonight. Well, they're used to seeing some quality pitching. Here in the Astrodome, Chris Holt obviously a little bit out of sync. You would expect he would be. He pitched throughout spring training. Got his work in the offseason. A little bit different when the bell rings. Already has thrown 20 pitches in the inning. Cirillo at second base. Sean Barry at first. And now the Brewers have another left-handed at bat with David Nilsson. 200 average translates into two hits and 10 at bats for David. Three runs batted in on opening night in St. Louis. He's been quiet since. Golden opportunity for him here. Cold working out of the stretch once again. And he misses high to Nilsson. The average for David Nilsson a little bit deceptive because he's been swinging the bat pretty well. Hit the ball hard three times last night. Had nothing to show for it. A rod of a base hit early. Six straight balls from Chris Holt. Everything high. It looks like he's having trouble with the off speed pitch. He's got a great circle change that he uses as an off speed pitch, and so far it appears that that's not working for him. We'll try it again out of the stretch. Showing a lot of patience, not going after that first pitch. Make him throw a strike. Keep the pressure on the pitcher. You don't want to do him any favors when he has control problems. Driving to short left to Dalgo on the dead run. He gets there to put it away and retire the side. The Brewers do get one in the top of the first to half inning of baseball done in the Lone Star State. Brewers won. Astros coming to bat. Brewers get an early run here in Houston tonight. Take a 1-0 lead to the bottom of the first inning for left-hander Bill Pulsifer. This is how the Astros align themselves under third-year manager Larry Durker. Let's check the Houston Astros century starting lineup. Craig Biggio at second base still looking for his first hit of 1999. He'll lead off. He's 0 for 13 to start the year. 
Right fielder Derek Bell bats in the two hole at first base. Former MVP Jeff Bagwell bats number three. Another National League MVP. Third baseman Ken Caminiti bats cleanup tonight. In left, young Richard Hidalgo hits number five. Center fielder Carl Everett bats six. The rookie catcher Mitch Molusky in the lineup batting number seven. Shortstop Ricky Gutierrez is in there batting eighth after a night off yesterday. And the pitcher Chris Holt bats number nine. And let's check out the Wisconsin lottery defense for the Brewers. Jose Valentin getting his second consecutive start. Still looking for hit number one. David Nilsson behind the plate and on the mound. Left-hander Bill Pulsifer making start number one. 25-year-old Southpaw Bill Pulsifer, 6'3", 200 pounds, originally a second-round selection by the New York Mets in June of 1991. Came to the Brewers via a mid-season trade last season for infielder Mike Kincaid. And as we mentioned in our broadcast open, made his Brewer debut here at the Astrodome last season. Craig Biggio with a drive that just sneaks the heck out of here. Well, there's his first hit in 1999. You knew he wouldn't stay quiet very much longer. Well, first pitch of the game. Looks like a slider in the hand of Pulsiver. Craig Biggio very aggressive. As a leadoff hitter, yeah, it was. There was a slider hung up in the strike zone, and Biggio did not miss it. Looked like it bounced off the top of the wall and into the garden. Yep. Boy, did you see Biggio as he crossed home plate to get the uh, handshakes from the teammates? He was shaking his head as if to say, you know, that monkey on my back had grown into a gorilla. That's a good way to get it going, though. First hit of the year, a home run. Yep, about time. Derek Bell is aboard a base hit past Valentin into left. This is kind of the night you're afraid of. These guys yeah. got up to such a cold start, you knew they'd snap out of it at some point. Yeah. Well, Bill Pulse with a straight fastball, the four seamer. My Derek Bell likes the ball out over the plate. A book on Bell early in the count. You want to pitch him in and finish him off with soft stuff. He likes the ball out there. There's another guy that hasn't really heated up yet, Jeff Bagwell. Just two for 14 to start the season. Well, the one nothing lead evaporates early on the Craig Biggio home run to start the bottom of the first. Derek Bell aboard, still nobody out. Popped up. Vinya near the bag. And there's Bill Pulsifer's first out tonight. You see Bagwell just missed that when you see the look on his face saying I want that pitch back. Give me that pitch next time. Just couldn't get on top of it hitting a mile in the air. Watch this swing by Bagwell. You think he leaves anything left in that bag? Well a big mighty hack just underneath a little bit. One out one on one in for Ken Caminiti now. Caminiti was one for two yesterday with a couple of walks and a stolen base. He's talking about a guy that's not at 100% health. Not a base stealer to begin with. He's out there stealing bases on you. Well, the Brewers have had a tough time of stopping the running game of the opposition. Opposition has stole nine bases off the Brewers already this year. The catchers have only thrown down one time. And some tremendous jumps on the Brewer pitchers. That's got to change. It's not his fault, not Bobby Hughes either. Talking about that with David before the ball game says, "What, do you, what can I do? They're working on their move. I'm not going to throw it unless I have an opportunity to throw them out." And just think about that. Nine stolen bases and the catchers have only thrown down one time. It's unbelievable. You just don't see that. No. Maybe you see that five, six times a year, but we're in the fifth game of the season. Those are enormous jumps. Two balls and a strike on Caminiti. Well, the steal of home last night by Craig Biggio really summarized the woes that the Brewer pitching staff has been experiencing in trying to deal with base runners. Another high fly ball this time in left. 
Jeff Jenkins is here for this one. And Cam Manitti is retired for out number two. Two gone for Pulsifer. That'll bring up the left fielder, Richard Hidalgo. Hidalgo homered here in Houston at the Astros opening night game against Chicago Cubs. Doggo, one of the guys that is going to benefit from the injury to Moise Salou. Moise Salou expected to be out for just about the whole season. So Hidalgo has an excellent opportunity to show what he can do on an everyday basis. So far, so good. Going to be a couple of guys that really have to step it up. That's the second one, Carl Everett. So far, both of them have been up to task. Well, the Astros had considered perhaps a move involving one of those guys in the offseason. Big swing and a miss by Hidalgo. Two balls and a strike. All those talks in the winter about perhaps bringing Roger Clemens back to his uh, native Houston, Texas to play for the Astros. The asking price was just too much. Well, Roger threw a shutout today. Maybe it wasn't too much. His first win as a Yankee came today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Astros like the mix they have in place currently. And they weren't going to really sacrifice that mix just because they lost the front line pitching greatness of Randy Johnson to free agency. This was a good team before Randy Johnson last year, and it's a good team now that he's gone. Certainly you'd like to have him here. President Tal Smith on the right of your screen. General Manager Jerry Hunsaker on your left. They've done a great job the past couple of winters building a back-to-back -back division championship club. Anytime you have three players in the middle of your lineup that are in there every day, they've been lucky with injuries. The injury to Moise Salou is really the only injury that has really set the Houston Astros back. It's really any level. You talk about Biggio, Bagwell, Derek Bell. These guys just don't get hurt. They're out there every day, and that's what it takes to win. There's a payoff home to Hidalgo. Swung on and ripped into the corner and foul. And a nice play by a number 88 down there. Well. Oh, that's BB. <laughs> I forgot my eye drops back in the hotel. Yeah. Still in all, it's a nice play. Some good glove work down there, yeah. man. Yeah. Still full three balls and two strikes on Richard Hidalgo. Sharply hit ground ball for Cirillo. Makes a good play and a strong throw. And only one in the Astro first on the leadoff home run by Craig Biggio. It's enough to tie the ball game, however. And after just one inning of baseball, we are tied one apiece. League record with six wild pitches in a game. I do not think it was him. Nope. I don't think so either. I had Nolan Ryan with the Astros for many years. It could have been him. Could have been him. Don Sutton put together some pretty good seasons down here. Yeah. Mike Scott. You know what would be a good guess on that one? Charlie Kerfell. Remember Charlie Kerfell? No. Uh, known to uncork a couple of big wild pitches in his day. Didn't Joe Necro pitch for the Astros? Joe Necro was an Astro. Yeah. Knuckle baller. That yeah. could have been it. Jose Valentin leads off his second inning for the Brewers. Bottom third of the order against Chris Holt. Who was able to stave off some of his own control trouble in the first and limit the Brewers to just one run. Valentin Jenkins and Pulsifer here in inning number two. Tomorrow's the finale of the series between these two clubs. It will be televised tomorrow. And the Brewers have a road day off in Montreal Monday before a three game series in Montreal against the Expos starting on Tuesday. What are we going to do in Montreal on a day off? Boy, that's anybody's guess. Grounded a second. Biggio to his left. 
He's awfully good when you make him move that way, one away. Well, the Brewers are bringing down the house beginning Friday, April 16th with the final home opener at County Stadium. All fans will receive the Edie's Pick and Save Brewers magnetic schedule as the Brewers battle it out against the Chicago Cubs. Still a few tickets left for the opening day. I cannot wait for that home opener. Yeah. Get back home. It's been a while, huh? It's been a while. We still got another four games to go on the road after this one. Tough way to open the season. Nine on the road, nine in 12 days before everybody gets back home to their own beds. 1 0 pitch to Jeff Jenkins. We'll go riding in the town, a whooping and a whomping every living thing within an inch of his life. Oh, my. <laughs> Except the women folk, of course. That was beautiful. Oh, that was a bomb. He's got one of the flaps coming down. Look at Jenks and style points on the home run. Man, there wasn't much doubt about that, baby. Jeff Jenkins gets on top of a high fastball. Well, look at that stroke. Good extension. Pivot on that back foot and then a line drive out of here in the second deck. Hit that one a ton. Bomb. A <laughs> ride man of Walpers, huh? No blazing saddles <laughs> for you there. <laughs> Is that a 10 gallon hat or are you just enjoying the show? <laughs> There's Pulsifer now. A couple of bombs already in this one. And Pulsifer helps himself out. Look at him taking that where it's pitched. Base hit into left center. Hey, Chris Holt getting everything upstairs. He had some control problems high in the strike zone, but watch his pitch. Watch where it is. About belt high, and boy, Bill Pulsiver. Good old karate chop swing, swinging down, and you can see the big smile on his face. First at bat, first hit. Get it out of the way quick. Here's Fernando Vina now. A run in, one away. A man at first for the top of the order. We've already seen almost as much offense tonight in an uh, inning plus as we did all night a night ago. Yeah, it might be one of those nights, huh? Oh. A little slug fest down here. Yep, for it. I'm ready. No plans tonight, my friend. Nowhere to be. Get along. 0-1 oh on Vigna. I'll tell you, the Brewers are due for a little offense here tonight. Yeah, they really haven't put together much since opening night. They scored nine runs on opening night, ten. From ten to eight. This place in particular has been stingy on the bats. Holt in front of Vigna, nothing and two. Oh, Nino trying to get into that one. Almost glanced him. That one went right between his legs. You're not sure how that one didn't hit him. Watch where this pitch goes. Fernando's trying to get hit, but no, right between the wickets. Pretty good croquet player, huh? Pretty good job by Mitch Molesky keeping that ball in front of him. Ball and two strikes on Vigna. Grounded to Bagwell. Good defensive backhand over to Gutierrez for one. Back to Bagwell. They get him both. He's got a couple of gold gloves in his cabinet back home in Connecticut. Middle of the second. Brewers by a run. Well, here's our Discovery Channel trivia question. Which Houston Astros pitcher set a major league record with six wild pitches in a game? J.R. Richard. Yeah, he can throw. Good fastball, hard slider against the Dodgers. Well, the toughest of all double plays to turn. The good old 3-6 three, to 3 double play. A lot of opportunity to screw that up, but the Astros execute perfection. He's done that a couple of times in his career. Bill Pulsifer has had one run lead back. 
Everett, Molesky, and Gutierrez here in the second for the Astros. You know that game, that uh, April 10th game back in 79, the J.R. Richard six wild pitch game, despite the fact that J.R. Richard uncorked six wild pitches, despite the fact that there was a passed ball, three stolen bases, and four walks on that line, mm -hmm. the Astros won the game two to one. So, uh, probably had a few strikeouts in there. Right? I bet he did. Carl Everett trying to hold up, clearly goes through. Speaking of strikeouts, Randy Johnson, 10 strikeouts in five innings. Oh, get along, huh? That's going on right now. And he's got it working tonight. Interesting call down at first base. What a heck of a play by Jeff Cirillo. It looked like that ball was by him. He was able to snare it into Webbing. Good instincts. You got to break back right away. Just in the Webbing. Now watch Sean Barry. Look at all the baseball that's showing. Now he can't really see it, but that ball never really was completely in his glove, and he got called out anyway. You see Larry Durker going out there to argue a little bit. This is the ultimate snow cone for Sean Barry. And then when he squeezes the glove a little bit more, it pops out. He's not out. He never had control of that baseball. Yeah. Yikes. Hey, we'll take it. You got to have complete control of the baseball and then take it out of your glove. Look at that. He never has this ball. It's still rolling around. If he had controlled it before Carl Everett got to first base, he would have been out, but that wasn't the case. Well, it happens. Here's Mitch Molusky. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Your routine five three put out. Put it in a box score the same way. Hit 353 with 17 home runs and 71 runs batted in at AAA New Orleans last year for the Astros. Not bad numbers. Real good numbers in a AAA campaign. They play 136 games in AAA, not as many as you play in the big league season. Awfully good numbers for the youngster. He is the catching future here for the Astros. His big Triple-A campaign allowed the Astros to uh, move Brad Osmus. Mm -hmm. Nothing like having a switch hitting catcher. It's something you don't see a whole lot of. Counts three balls and a strike on Molusky. Little looper towards the gap. That's going to drop in. Hit of the night for the Astros. You see pitching coach Bill Campbell checking it out. A little bit of a concern for the pitching staff with the Brewers, at least early on in the season. Here's Ricky Gutierrez now, the shortstop. 10 for his or three for his first 10 rather this season. He's got Molesky at first with one away. It's Tim Bogart that started at shortstop last night. He was our player of the game a night ago as well. Came through with the game winning hit against Bob Whitman in the end. Yeah. It's ideal when you have a guy that comes off the bench to give your starters a rest and come up with some big hits. Two balls and no strikes on Ricky Gutierrez. Molusky at first with one away. Bill Pulsifer had an unusual spring training for the Brewers this year. 
certainly wouldn't categorize it as either good or bad. He led the team in starts. Really wanted to get Pulse out there on the mound as often as they could. Of course, a lot of it just worked out as circumstantial. Pulsifer was able to pitch on his day, whereas a lot of starters, Scott Carl included, last night's starter, had to work in simulated games because of travel days, because of, say, a game in Las Vegas mm -hmm. or Mexico. Well, Phil Gorda wanted to make sure that the guys that he was not sure about, the starting pitchers that he wanted to take a good look at, got opportunities to pitch in the big league games. Well, pitchers like Jim Abbott later on in spring and Scott Carl. Worked over in the minor leagues or a simulated game. Bill knows what he's got with Scott Carl and Abbott. Pulsiver, William Van Landing game before he got sent down. He wanted to take a good look at those guys. Rafael Roque. Well, for to Gutierrez. So runners at first and second now with the pitcher due up. That'll bring Bill Campbell to his feet. The former pitching coach will make his first appearance tonight. They certainly hate for the bottom of the order to do a lot of damage. It's a tough enough time getting through the top five in that order with Biggio, Bagwell, Hidalgo, Caminiti. When the bottom of the order gets on base and makes things happen, that's when you have to really be concerned. This is the part of the lineup where you figure you can cruise through a little bit. Molusky at second base, Gutierrez at first. The entire infield gathers for the meeting on the mound. And Pulsifer will go to work against Chris Holt. And the Brewers expecting Chris Holt to lay down a bunt, perhaps to try and nip Molusky at third base. We'll see what the Astros decide to do. Pitcher versus pitcher here in a big early situation. Holt's going to give himself up, gets to Pulsifer very quickly to third base for one. Back to first, not in time to double off Holt. Boy, Pulsifer was on that like a cat. Well, the bunt was hard right to him. Pulsifer was covering the third baseline, and Chris Holt bunted it right to him, right in stride. Everybody does their job and get Molesky at third base and almost get the double play. Very close at first. Boy, a left-handed pitcher has the advantage in making that play. That's why the double play was so close. Right-handed pitcher has a little bit tougher time making that throw to third. PFP, pitcher's fielding practice. They do it all spring long. Everybody's seen those drills pay some dividends to the Brewers early in 1999. Almost paid him another one right there. Here's Biggio now. He had that leadoff home run his first at bat. Hey, now you have to be concerned with a guy like Biggio. Not that you didn't before, but now he's got that confidence back. He's got that hit under his belt. Now look out. Expect this guy to go on a tear. Last year's Astro team MVP. Second consecutive year he has been voted as such. Amongst a lot of candidates, huh? Yeah, you bet. Take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got your first baseman driving in over 100 runs. Hit almost 40 dingers. Randy Johnson, he was 10 and 1. Moise Salou put up a huge year. Billy Wagner. Yeah. You know, any team that wins its division two straight seasons is going to have a couple of candidates. We told fans last night that the Astros have the second best winning percentage in the National League over the last six years to the Atlanta Braves. No surprise there. Might be surprised to find out who the other teams are that round out the top five. I certainly was. The Braves. The Astros rounding out the top five, the Los Angeles Dodgers, San Francisco Giants, and Montreal Expos. Mm -hmm. Bit of a surprise, huh? Sure is. We have a tendency to think of the Expos only in terms of their cost-cutting current 1998-1999 version. Forgetting how good that team was for so many years recently. 
One, two to Biggio, swung out of it, strike three. Great change by Pulsifer. He comes back to record the big strikeout with a couple of men on. Nothing in the Houston second. End of two, two to one Brewers. Brewers on top of the Astros, two to one. Top of the third inning, it'll be Grissom, Cirillo, and Bernitz against right-hander Chris Holt. Tomorrow in the matinee affair, opening day starters Raphael Roque for the Brewers, Shane Reynolds will host it here for the Astros. Reynolds a 19-game winner a year ago. And the opening day starter here for the Astros the past number of years. And the Brewers will get a good look at him tomorrow afternoon. The Astros starting three right-handers. The Brewers starting three left-handers. Two balls and a strike to Marquise Grissom. Well, on paper, you'd think that those would result in three huge offensive nights. The Astros hit lefties very well. The Brewers' strengths, as we know, are with their left-handed hitters. Certainly wasn't the case yesterday. Three to two win by the Astros. Well played ball game a night ago. Yeah, both, both ball clubs, you know, neither one of them really hitting the ball all that consistently, at least in the first week. Grounded out to Gutierrez in the hole and short throw to first. Nice work on the receiving end by Bagwell. A good play all around. Ricky Gutierrez knew that he had to be quick because Marquise was getting down the line in good shape. Very quick release. Really didn't have an opportunity to set himself. And a nice dig by Bagwell. You don't think that a good first baseman will save a fielding percentage for a shortstop? Good play. Not just a hitter, is he? Play on both sides of the diamond. Grissom almost legged it out. One away now for Cirillo. Walked his first at bat tonight. Slice it away from him, but Biggio grabs it for out number two. Chris Holt continues to keep the ball up in the strike zone, and the Brewers hitting the ball pretty hard. Fastball right down the middle, and a classic Cirillo swing inside out. Shoots at the right, unfortunately, right at Biggio. Telling Fernando, what do I have to do? I Here's know. Jeremy Bernitz now. <laughs> he takes that stuff hard, boy. Yeah, he does. Well, when we saw Jeff today before the game, he was still stinging about striking out on three swinging pitches against Billy Wagner. One of the things that makes Jeff such a great hitter, such a great competitor, is that he'll remember that probably for the rest of his life. Yeah, well, at least until he faces Wagner again. Hopefully that won't be in this series. We were chit-chatting about Billy Wagner today, talking about how none of the current Brewers have as much as one hit against Billy Wagner. And Jeff was quick to point out that the Brewers won a game last year against Houston at County Stadium when Mark Newfield, then of the Brewers, hit a game-winning double into the left field corner. Yeah, pinch hitter. We had forgotten about that. Jeff didn't forget about that. It's another thing that makes him such a great player. He remembers that bats like uh, nobody's business. Bernitz lines into left center. That'll drop and bound over Hidalgo. Bernitz is aboard. Now Bernie had the sack fly on the first and double here. His first hit since his opening night home run in St. Louis. Well, it's good to see Bernitz using left field. He did that a lot in spring training. A sacrifice fly went to left field and he hit a pitch up in the strike zone. Line drive into the gap in left center field for a double. A good stroke. Hit the ball where it's pitched. You stay down. Easy double for Bernitz with two outs. Here's Sean Berry now. Runner in scoring position for the Brewers. That's Bernitz at second with two away.
There was a blurb today in this morning's Houston Chronicle about Sean Berry coming back to Houston early in this 99 season as a Brewer. Talking about his stay here with the Astros. It was a pleasant one. He enjoyed playing here, enjoyed playing for Larry Durker, but told the Houston Chronicle that as soon as he heard that Caminiti wanted to come home, he knew he was on his way out. Burnett's running from second, throw to third, not in time. Caminiti tumbling hard on the slide in by Burnett's. Brewers first stolen base of the year. Let me talk about some risky business. You got a question why Burnett's is running with two outs trying to steal third base. You take off the third base with two outs. You better make it. And Jeremy just does beat the throw. That's particularly when you got one of your hottest hitters up and Sean Berry. Caminiti a little bit late getting over there. He's playing deep respecting the power of Sean Berry. Hey what I venture to say that Phil Gron is a little bit shocked on that one. Trainer is going to come out and attend to Cam and Eddie. I mentioned it earlier. This is a guy who's not playing at 100 percent. Sinusitis. The uh, official diagnosis on the viral infection that has really slowed down Cam and Eddie. Yeah. It's banged up there on the slide by Burnett. But you, you're just not going to get this guy out of the lineup. There's no way about it. it Look like Burnett slid a little bit on his ankle. His ankle was kind of laying back trying to pre prevent Burnett from getting into the bag. Might have twisted the ankle a little bit. Like, yeah, it looked like he twisted on his way out of there. Well, the stolen base puts Burnitz at third with two away now. And it's two and one to Barry. Another reason you really don't want to be moving around a whole lot. As a base runner at second base, it really distracts the hitter. The hitter is really trying to focus in on the arm angle of the pitcher and looking for the baseball. And then all of a sudden he sees a runner take off. Distracts him a little bit and he might waste a good pitch. Full count out of Barry three and two. David Nilsson waiting on deck. Grounded up the middle and through an RBI single for Barry. That plates Burnitz easily, make it three to one Brewers. Well, it didn't much matter either way, did it? Jeremy Burnitz would have scored on that base hit regardless of where he was. Look at the slider down in the strike zone. It was in the middle of the plate, but it was down around the ankles. And Sean Barry went down and got it and shot it right up the middle. Now the Brewers continue to peck away. Single runs in each of the first three innings. David Nilsson now he slaps one through the hole on the left side. Another pitch up in the strike zone. David just slapped it through that left side hole. And the Brewers in business with two away. One in runners in first and second. And Jose Valentin the batter. Well, probably no coincidence that most of the base hits the Brewers have gotten have been either up the middle or to the opposite field. Vini's double went down the left field line. The only hit that was pulled was Jenkins home run. Well, you got to take what the pitcher gives you. He's not pitching inside. Don't give you anything to pull. Don't pull it. Go right with it. Much easier to say it than do it. Got some early bullpen activity for Houston. Here's Valentin now runners at first and second. One run in here in the inning. Barry at second base. Nilsson at first. Valentin looking for his first hit of the season, sitting on an 0 for 6 so far. Can't think of a better time for him to chime in. Well, I look for Jose to break out of it right here. A 2 0 count. You got to figure he's going to get a fastball. And if he gets one where he likes it, look out. Air this place out with this swing. Crack foul. Jeff Jenkins waiting on deck. Hit a monster home run against Holt back in the second inning. First of the year for Jenkins, the first of many. 
still another reason why you figure Jose to get some pretty good pitches in this at bat. He doesn't want to be facing Jenkins again with men on. You better believe it. The 2-1. Two, two balls and two strikes. Three runs on six hits for the Brewers. Well, the Ducks on the pond with two away here in the third, looking for more. Big 10 run offensive output on opening day in St. Louis. The Brewers really haven't come close to that kind of run production since. Valentine with a drive well hit to center. Everett on the run. He'll set up and make the play. Boy, Hosey gave it a ride. Chris Holt gets off the hook with only one in the Brewer third. <laughs> oh, Otter, go away. <laughs> Potter, it wasn't that great. All right, mom and dad, bring the kids out to County Stadium on April, Saturday, April 17th for the Kool-Aid Kids Home Opener as the Brewers host the Cubs. <laughs> that boy is a P.I.G. pig. <laughs> Receive four free upper grandstand tickets when you redeem 25 empty Kool-Aid packages. Call 9339000. Gary, how can I work under these conditions? Oh, tell me that is not uh, sorority girl Mandy Pepperidge right there. That looked just like her. Unbelievable. The boo punch is alive and well down here deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> Bill Pulsifer back to work on the mound. Bottom half of inning number three. He'll start things against Derek Bell. Bell, Bagwell, and Caminiti for the Brewers. For the Astros, rather. Giddy over my Mandy Pepperidge lookalike. Derek Bell singled in the first. <laughs> we put the numbers up on the screen when we did our broadcast open tonight. In fact, that the top three hitters in Larry Durker's lineup tonight, Biggio Bell and Bagwell, all put up enormous numbers against left-handed pitching in 1998. Otter. That's your new nickname, man. <laughs> You're gonna, I'm gonna drop an otter on. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to get back into the baseball part of this now. <laughs> That's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Two one to Bell. Misses low. There they are. A lot of carnage against the southpaws. Yeah, they did a lot of damage against left-handers last year. And you got to figure that sooner or later these guys are gonna break out of it. Biggio did it once. And there's ball four to Derek Bell. Number five. Second walk of the contest Number issued five. by Bill Polson. Astros have their leadoff hitter aboard. Now it's Jeff Bagwell. about the Astros really have been scoring a whole lot of runs in the first game plus in this series Astros have had 11 at bats in nine innings they've had the leadoff runner aboard you're playing with fire when you do that it happened eight of not, seven of eight innings last night the Astros were able to get their first hitter on and two out of the first three innings tonight they go swing and a miss Pitching a lot more difficult. Steal, hit and run, bunt. Pretty good pitch by Pulsifer. Looked like the split finger pitch that he uses as his changeup and Bagwell way out in front. We talked yesterday about some of the neck problems that Jeff Bagwell's been going through. A stiff neck bothering him for much of spring training. The Astros finally had to put a chiropractor on him to try and loosen him up. Some of the Astros folks told us that it was so difficult for the chiropractor to get in there and perform the treatment because he is so loaded up with muscle in his upper body. The guy's shoulders are just stacked. Got to have hands of stone to do chiropractic treatment on a guy like Bagwell. Yeah. He better do it right. Yeah. He'll be cracking your bones, huh? Yeah. Ever had that done, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, it was pretty good. Sure does. 
a good friend in that business. I still have to pay, though. <laughs> Can't be that good a friend. <laughs> still one and two to Bagwell. Remember last year, all the, the stiff neck trouble that Jeff Cirillo was going through, and it prevented Jeff from playing defensively because at third base, it really aggravated the stiff neck condition every time he threw across the diamond. Jeff played some first base for the first time in his major league career last year. He's very good out there at first base. Yeah. But that seemed to solve the problem. It gave him enough rest, enough downtime without having to make that throw, whereby the neck could heal. Bagwell's problem comes when he swings the bat. Because as you can see, he swings it with such force. I mean, it's a wonder how he doesn't throw his neck out every time anyway. Yeah. Let's it all fly, doesn't he? Doesn't strike out a whole lot. That's the amazing thing. Waits as long as he possibly can and just lets it go. Holds nothing back. Both of them are trying to keep Derek Bell as close as he can. He's been watching his counterparts. I should say his comrades giving up big jumps. Trying to keep Derek Bell close to first. Oh, Jeff Jenkins. He took that one out of the Rose Garden. Yeah, Bagwell just did miss that one. You remember his last at bat? He hit a mile high pop up to Fernando Vini. He's starting to center on that fastball a little bit. Gets under it just enough to keep it in the ballpark. That's a slider up in the strike zone. Bagwell's not sure. But Jenkins gets to the fence, knows exactly where he is, able to leap and make the catch. Well, it just barely kept that one in the ballpark. Bell advances to second on the fly out to left. One away now for Caminiti. Excuse me, swing foul ball. Off the bat, it looked like that was going into the upper tank. Yeah. We've made reference to it many times in these broadcasts here from Houston, how they brought the fences in within the last five, six, seven years. It's not the death cavern that it was out there in the 70s when the likes of uh, Jose Cruz was leading this team in home runs with grand totals of 13, 14, and 15 year in and year out. There's Jose. He's they got four hit a little kids. bit, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. Still has a lot of the career records here. Held that bad way up in the air. Three of his four kids are named Jose. And the only reason it's not all four of them is because the fourth is a daughter. Shouldn't have stopped him. No. Like George Foreman, right? All his boys are named George. That's right. What's he have? 11, 12 Georges? Well, Jose Valentin's brother is also named Jose. Two balls and a strike on Caminiti. Jose Antonio Valentin plays shortstop for the Brewers. Jose Javier Valentin catches for the Twins. Got to go by middle names in that household, right? Yeah. Pretty good numbers for Ken Caminiti against Milwaukee. The 3-1 to him from Pulsifer. He checked his swing. Charlie Relaford calls it a strike. Full count. Well, that strike zone that's supposed to be a little higher this year. Pitch looked like he was all right. Bolsover has struck out one and walked two in his two and a third tonight so far. Pay off to Caminiti, chopper to third. Cirillo keeps Bell in check and gets the runner at first. Most of us said that he was going to use a lot of sinking fastballs today to try and keep the ball on the ground, but really hasn't thrown a whole lot of ground balls. The ground balls that he has been able to get have all gone to third base. That's three of them. A lot of fly balls. 
Here's Richard Hidalgo now. Bell at second base. There via the leadoff walk. He advanced on a fly out to left. Checking the National League scoreboard. Interesting proceedings in Atlanta where Randy Johnson threw six innings of work has struck out 12 Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Got it going. The dog go ground foul wide of third. So he's got three innings left. He strikes them all out. Record uh, nine strikeouts and set a new record. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Awfully tough to imagine that. It's a heck of a seven innings, however, against a pretty good hitting team. Elsewhere in the National League tonight, Pittsburgh defeated the Cubs. That was this afternoon, 9 to 3. Ex Brewer Brad Woodall took the loss for Chicago. Mets beat Montreal. St. Louis beat Cincinnati. The Reds off to a rough start. The Giants' dreams of an undefeated season have ended as they were handed their first loss this afternoon at home against San Diego, an 11 to 1 drubbing by the Padres. Surprisingly bad start for Cincinnati. Pete Harness shut his Cardinals out last night. They were expected to do a little bit better. National League Central was going to be wide open pretty much all season. The Cubs tied for first place with four other clubs at 500, two and two. Two balls and two strikes to Hidalgo. That's a pitch count on Bill Poulter for 57 pitches. More balls than strikes. That's the bad news. A note on that Cubs game, that Cubs Pirates game today. Sammy Sosa is 0 for 4. He's batting 0 5 9 through the first handful of Cub games this year. And already there are way too many people clamoring what's wrong with Sammy Sosa. Please give the guy a little break. Yeah. Five games into the season, huh? We're not even done with a week's worth of games, and there are already people wondering what's, quote, wrong with Sammy Sosa. He'll be just fine. Swing and a miss, strike three. Nothing comes of the leadoff walk against Bill Pulsifer in the third. We head to the fourth, three to one Brewers. Houston Astros will sorely miss this guy. Moise Salou out indefinitely, as it says, with a torn knee ligament that he suffered during the offseason, falling off, of all things, a treadmill. And Moise Salou probably done for the season. Top of the fourth inning, Jeff Jenkins leads off for the Brewers. Jenkins followed by the pitcher, Bill Pulsifer, then top of the order, Fernando Vina. Brewers on top of the Astros, 3-1. to one. Three runs on six hits for the Brewers. A run on three hits for Houston. Long ball has been a part of the attack for both clubs. The Astros get their lone run on a leadoff home run by Craig Biggio in the bottom of the first. Brewers got one on a solo dinger by this man. Jeff Jenkins takes one into the opposite corner this time. He puts Hidalgo on the run, crashes into the scoreboard, and makes another great catch. Man, Hidalgo's been all over the field. Last night he made a catch against the wall and knocked a zero off the board. He did it again tonight. Boy, Jenkins showing good power going the other way. Just gets under it enough to keep it in the ballpark and watch the dog go back to the fence, make the catch, and knock it two out of the wall. There it goes. Got to do something about that ball, huh? <laughs> a zero last night, a two tonight. See, that guy who has the job of hanging the numbers up back there just must get real angry with the dog. Ah, yeah. imagine, imagine me just sitting back there with his head against the wall, and all of a sudden he feels the dog go banging him in the head. <laughs> Here's Pulsifer now. Count a ball and a strike on him, make it one and two to Pulsifer. Pulsifer singled back in the second. A solid line drive to left center. Top of the order waiting on deck for the Brewers. Beep. 
Some American League scores today as well. Final scores from this afternoon. Mike Mussina shuts out Toronto. One nothing win for the Orioles at Camden Yards this afternoon. Another shutout at the Bronx. Roger Clemens gets his first win as a Yankee. He is a 5-0 winner against Brian Moeller and the Tigers. Colson protects a look at a cold strike three, two away. First strike out of the night for Chris Holt. He's trying to keep the Brewers off the board for the first time in the game. He pits right on the outside corner. Here's Vinian now doubled and scored back in the first. Kansas City a 9 to 4 winner at Chicago over the White Sox. Jim Pitsley over ex Brewer Jamie Navarro in the decision. One game in progress in the American League of Note. Pedro Martinez and the Red Sox trying to stay undefeated. Red Sox lead Tampa Bay 5 to 3. Sox trying to move to 5 and 0. They're the last undefeated team left in the big leagues. They might have to go undefeated to beat the Yankees this year. It's going to take some kind of effort to be to throw in that team. Yeah. Now, Fernando doesn't like this call. You tell me. Pretty good pitch. That's the newfangled high strike. Wasn't inside, wasn't high. Fernando still doesn't like it. One, two to Nando. Little topper back towards the mound. Molesky has it and gets him at first. Well, a guy whose defense was the question starting play this year has looked pretty good with the glove tonight. Brewers go away in order in the fourth. in any form without the express written consent of the Milwaukee Brewers. You didn't tell me you had sisters. Me? You've been holding out on me, my friend. Oh, you didn't know it if I had sisters like that. No, I don't have sisters. Yeah, I believe I would. Now yeah, you'd know. <laughs> Bill Pulsifer back to work here in the bottom of the fourth. Everett, Molusky, and Gutierrez scheduled. Three to one Brewers. Milwaukee with single runs in the first, second, and third innings tonight behind Pulse of Here's Carl Everett. Everett off to a red hot start in 1999. Five for his first 14 with a home run and three runs batted in through his first four games of the season. Drive into center. Grissom drifts over for it. One away. Fans re redeem a Henry salad dressing neck label on April 20th only and receive one upper grandstand ticket. As the Brewers against the Cardinals during Henry's upper grand slam Tuesday, supplies limited. So call 933-9000 for details. Here's the rookie catcher, Mitch Molusky. Singled his first at bat tonight. All right. We talked about the 1998 starting catcher here in Houston, Brad Osmus, and how Molusky's arrival gave the Astros something of a tradable All excess right. at catcher. They're certainly taking a flyer. They're taking something of a chance carrying Molusky and Eusebio behind the plate. Brad Osmus has for some time been regarded as one of the strongest defensive catchers in Major League Baseball. It's a consummated deal between the Astros and the Detroit Tigers. Is probably uh, one of the easier trades to make between Major League teams as Astro president Cal Smith is the father of Tiger general manager Randy Smith. Swing and a miss strike three by Molusky. Not a very good swing by Molusky. Good pitch by Bill Pulsiver, however. You can see this slider going down and in, and not a very good swing by the young catcher. 
There he is, Tal Smith. To niche. They could make that trade over, uh, you know, dinner. Sure. Over the holidays, Christmas right dinner. Yeah, Randy could give uh, Tal a phone call on Father's Day. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Want to trade catchers? Like playing fantasy league. Yeah. Here's Ricky Gutierrez. One other note on Osmus going to the Tigers. It's the third time Randy Smith has acquired Brad Osmus for either the Rockies, Padres, or Tigers, the teams that he's worked in a front office capacity with. He likes him a little bit. Good catcher. Run a little bit, hit. I can say the Brewers did something very similar in getting rid of a, or allowing to go a catcher that's very good defensively and looking for some offense behind the plate. Mike Matheny, a free agent, signing with Toronto, and they've got two offensive-minded catchers in David Nelson and Bobby Hughes. Two balls and two strikes on Ricky Gutierrez, batting with two away and the base is empty. We saw right-hander Brian Williams up in the Houston bullpen a moment ago. Popped him up. Barry is there for it. And Bill Pulsifer has recorded his first one, two, three inning of the night. Through four in Texas. Brewers by a pair. Sometimes the neighborhood boys get a little too enthusiastic with their baseball. Well, that's just fine with Phil. You boys play all the baseball or, for that matter, football you want. But if a soccer ball ever goes through his window, <laughs> well, 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 he'll have words with a high life man. What do you look for in grass seed? Quick results? We seeded it with Scott's seed last fall. As soon as I planted it, boom, it just came in. A really terrific lawn? And it feels like crushed velvet under your feet. It's wonderful. How about weeds? Bargain brands can contain thousands of weed seeds that can ruin your lawn forever. You can spend a dollar or two less for a bag of seed. But you don't want weeds in your grass seed. Scott's Premium Grass Seed, 99 and 99 one hundredths percent weed free for a beautiful lawn guaranteed. We knew the rocket bingo machine was a special invention, but it needed testing. Thanks to the bravery of Mr. Jingles, we could monitor things like pulse, brainwave activity, and motor skill response. Our conclusion? Rocket bingo is fast, exciting, and easy to learn. One thing still puzzled us, however. How did Mr. Jingles get so lucky? Rocket bingo at Potawatomi Bingo. All systems are go. Now the Brewers Powerade Fan Club offers kids 13 and under Brewers tickets and souvenirs for just 14 bucks. To join, call 414-933-4114 and ask about the Powerade half-price offer. Marquise Grissom leads off the Brewers fifth. Grissom, Cirillo, and Burnitz. Brewers on top of the Houston Astros tonight. Three to one, Matt Vaskersian back with Bill Schroeder and producer director Gary Kirby. Glad to have you with us tonight. We'll be with you tomorrow afternoon as well. A 1.30 start tomorrow for this series finale. A ball and a strike to Grissom. And it's 35th and final year as the home of the Houston Astros. Ball and two strikes to Grissom. As this is Grissom's second year in a Brewer uniform, only a lot less pressure on Marquise this year than last year in terms of battling National League uniforms. Going into the year last year, Grissom was the only Brewer with really substantial experience as a hitter, that is, against teams like the Astros and other National League clubs. Well, it should give the Brewers a little bit more of an advantage now that they have seen most of the pitching that they're going to be facing this year. We'll know a little bit more about the styles that each club has, who likes to run, who doesn't. 
Two and two. Well, when you look at the club, you look at the year last year the Brewers had coming right out of the shoot, playing in Atlanta and Florida, going into the month of May, the Brewers were in first place. It really didn't appear that lack of knowledge of the league created a problem for them. It was more or less later in the season, once they got a little bit more comfortable, that's when the pitching started to get a little bit shaky. The starting pitching, the bullpen really was overworked for no fault of that man, Phil Garner. No choice. Grounded back up the middle and through. Base hit for Marquise. But you're right, the more a hitter sees a pitcher, the more comfortable he becomes. <laughs> Vern Rule, pitching coach of the Astros, stirring a bit in the Astro dugout. And once again, the Houston bullpen gets busy behind Holt. There's Cirillo now. What a good opportunity right here for a hit and run. Marquise with good speed. Cirillo handles the bat extremely well. I'd like to see the Brewers run a little bit, huh? Trevor Miller in the bullpen, the Astro left-hander. Hit and run, stolen base, any combination thereof. I'd like to see Marquise get the wheels back. Last year was his lowest stolen base total in the big leagues. He has a nice healthy lead out there. Anytime you get a front foot on that AstroTurf, that means you've got a good lead. And Marquise looking very closely at Doug Manzalino down the third base coaching box. Good count to run, one and one. Takes that extra half step lead. Two balls and no strikes now to Cirillo. They don't normally see a team run on 2 and 0. Oh. You'd like to give the batter a free shot at a pitch if he likes it. You don't, you don't want to make him swing at a 2 0 oh pitch. That doesn't mean Marquise can't take off on his own. One hop to third. Caminiti to Biggio back to Bagwell. They double him off. Second double play of the night turned by Houston. Now the Brewers picking up right where they left off last year, leading the National League and grounding into double plays. Cirillo hits it hard. A 2 0 fastball up in the zone, one hop to Caminiti, and that was it. Only Cirillo led the league last year in grounding into double plays. The Brewers have taken themselves out of a lot of innings in the first week of the season with the double play. Boy, Phil Garner's seen that too much. Here's Burnitz now. He grounds to Bagwell. Bagwell's all over the place defensively with Holt covering it to one, two, three, fifth, despite the leadoff single. The midway point in tonight's Brewers on top of the Astros, three to one. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning from the Astrodome in Houston tonight. The Brewers on top of the Astros, three to one. Brewers looking for their first win since opening night in St. Louis. Bill Pulse for so far has been up to task. Pulse has limited the Astros to just the one run through his first four innings today. In the midst of a string in which he has retired six in a row. Had some early trouble in the first and second. Got out of that with only one run coming across the plate. That on the Craig Biggio home run. Has really righted the ship here of late. Chris Holt's night is through as we have a pinch hitter stepping in to bat for Holt in the pitcher's spot. Alex Diaz, a former Brewer. The utility outfielder here with the Astros this year will pinch hit leading off the fifth. Back in 1994, Alex Diaz put together a pretty good season for the Brewers in part-time duty. Had seven triples in that season. Hey, 
got to figure that guy's pretty happy right now. Of course, he's on the short end of the stick of a 3 1 ball game, but he got that first outing of the year out of the way. He didn't pitch all that poorly. Two balls in a strike on Diaz. A run on three hits against Pulsifer through four innings for the Astros. Pulse has struck out three and walked a pair. Alex Diaz spent last season in the San Francisco Giants organization. Played most of the season at Triple A Fresno. He was up at the big league club for a couple of weeks at one point. Three balls and two strikes to him now. Well, real important that you get Diaz out here. You certainly don't want to start the inning with the pinch hitter getting on. Then you have to deal with the top of this Houston Astros lineup. Big out, big pitch. Still a full count, three and two. There's Biggio waiting on deck. This is only game five of the season. There's a swing and a miss by Diaz. Strike three. Bill Pulsiver continues to get stronger as the game goes on. What a heck of a pitch on a 3-2 count. Look at that pitch cutting down and in on Alex Diaz and he swings right over the top. That's a big out. You don't want to be facing these guys at the top of the order with anyone on. All four of Bill Pulsifer's strikeouts have come in his last nine at bats. Getting stronger indeed. Here's Biggio now. Started to say that yes, it's only game five of the season, but I don't think we've seen it yet. Bill Campbell and Phil Garner sitting uh, anywhere next to each other on the bench in the Brewer dugout. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to know each other a little bit, what their philosophies are throughout the ball game. Biggio wraps to third. Cirillo's got it. Two quick outs for Pulsifer in the fifth. There they are. Looks like they go to the same barber. <laughs> Derek Baldobatter now with two gone and the bases empty. He has singled and walked tonight. Bell having a good series. Three for four with a couple of walks and a stolen base. It's amazing to see what happens in that dugout as the course of the game goes on. First couple innings, everybody's kind of loose. Getting into the ball game. Middle innings, everybody sits back. You know, Bill Campbell, Phil Groner sitting back, twitching their mustaches and just relaxing a little bit. Last three innings a little bit different. You're going to see Garner up on his feet. Pacing around, one foot up on that dugout. Not going to be like that all night. No. No? No, I'd say not. <laughs> Look at that. I tell you, you'll never see a picture like that. They both got their hands crossed the same way. They're both wearing their watches the same way, same mustache. You get a picture of them in the eighth and ninth inning, I guarantee they won't be too close to each other. Same way with the players too. If you're a part-time player. You pretty much watch the ball game and you figure when you might have an opportunity to get into the game. Bullpen. Everybody in the bullpen knows what their role is. You know, David Weathers, for the most part, gets himself all keyed up. Middle of the ball game. Bob Whitman probably doesn't even go down there until the seventh or eighth inning. Bell ground sharply past Valentine. Breaking pitch hung up in the strike zone and Bell hammered it into center. Two out single for Derek Bell. And Bill Campbell has seen too many fastballs out over the plate on Derek Bell. Certainly like to see him crowd Bell at least early in the count. He doesn't get those big arms out. He's probably shaking his head thinking I don't want to be facing Bagwell as a tie and run.
Bagwell Caminiti. How do you do? 1 0 to Jeff Bagwell. Line back up the middle of base hit. Couple of two out singles. Runners at first and second now with two away for Caminiti. Well, you can see the evolution of Jeff Bagwell's swing tonight. First time up, a towering pop up to the infield. Second time up, just missed hitting a home run, but still got underneath it and didn't miss this one at all. He centered this fastball right on the nose. That's right down the middle, about mid thigh. And the Brewers are lucky that ball stayed in the ballpark. Two men on, two away for Caminiti. He's hitless tonight against Pulsifer. Nothing for two. A little pop-up, slicing in foul territory. Barry's got it. And a big third out for Bill Pulsifer in the fifth. Well, the old Bo Jackson routine. There it is. Yeah. That hurts the knees. <laughs> Banged up already. Channel3000.com. Click on the MSC icon for our Brewers Interactive question of the game. Yesterday, we asked you with your uh, thoughts, what current announcer in the major leagues would make a great manager in the major leagues? An overwhelming flood of responses for that man, the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers, Bob Uecker, including Eric Morrell from Oshkosh, who said, how can't you consider Mr. Baseball, Bob Uecker? He's a no-brainer. Major League, Miller Lite, and Sunny Days at County Stadium. Get up. Get out of here, gone. Yeah. He'd make a good manager, I think. I, I think, think so, he, too. I don't think he'd put up with any nonsense from his guys, I don't think. I also think he's, he's uh, smart enough not to take the job. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty comfortable where he's at, huh? You bet. New pitcher for the Astros. He is left-hander Trevor Miller taking over for Chris Holt. Sean Berry greets him with a high drive in center. Playable for Carl Everett. One away. Trevor Miller spent his first full season with the Houston Astros last year. First year in the big leagues. Put up a pretty good season. Not a hard throw, a fastball. He'll turn it over from time to time. Got also got a slider. If you log on to their website tonight, again, that's www.channel3000.com, and then click the MSC icon. Tonight's question of the game, we want you to tell us what your favorite baseball movie of all time is and why. Hmm. You have one? Here's David Nilsson. Boy, I, you know, that's tough. That's, I got a few of them. David Weathers up in the Brewer bullpen. I don't, you know, it, it would be a tough call for me between uh, Field of Dreams, mm -hmm. Bad News Bears, and Bingo Long and the Traveling All-Stars. And I'm not discounting the natural or or uh, uh, major leagues. Another good one. I like some of the old ones. Oh yeah. I like the Lou Gehrig story. Oh yeah. Yeah. Monty Stratton story. How about uh, did you ever see Bang the Drum slowly with yeah. De Niro? Yeah. Yeah. Three and one to Nilsson. It happens every spring is uh, another one based on the novel by the same name. That's another one of my favorites. There's there's too many. That one gets a piece of David. Ouch. Snapped him back. Got him around the knees. Trying to get inside on Nilsson. And David not able to get out of the way. You can see Miller throws a little bit side on, almost three quarters, low three quarters on that pitch, and got Nilly right on that thigh muscle. So a base runner for Jose Valentin now. Jose hitless tonight. Still looking for his first knock of the year. Three to one Brewers. A runner and one away here in the sixth inning. You know, this might have been a better uh, a better question. What is your least favorite baseball movie? Because we have so many favorites because we're so fond of the game. Mm -hmm. Is there one that you can think of that you, you didn't care for? Oh, there was a lot of those, I think. Really? Yeah, I think some of the more recent baseball movies I didn't like as much. You want, you want to give me a such as? I honestly thought Bull Durham was a bit unrealistic. Really? Yeah. You didn't like Bull Durham? No, I didn't. Unrealistic. 
Okay. Certainly like Major League. I enjoyed both the movies. I haven't seen the new one. Mm -hmm. the, the only baseball movie that I've seen that really bugged me was that Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> oh, Valentin hammers that pitch into the corner and left. Hidalgo is over for this one as well. Just can't get anything to drop in left with Hidalgo covering so much room. That's a good swing by Jose Valentin, who really struggles from the right side of the plate. But Hidalgo has been all over the place in left field, going back into the gap, this time down the line. Looked like a short slider that Miller got up in the strike zone, but Jose unable to find some turf. Richard Hidalgo all over the place. Two gone now for Jeff Jenkins. You know what I didn't like about that Angels in the outfield? Talk about unrealistic. There was a Danny Glover was the manager of that team member. Yeah. And there was one dialogue scene, one little interaction scene where he referred to a player going on the IR, injured reserve, yeah, football I terminology. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Come on, fellas. Who was a technical advisor for that trash IR? And I think they called the manager coach once. Yeah. Another football gap. Details, details, details. That's right. right. Yeah. Here's the 0-1 home to Jenkins, and that misses away. Trevor Miller spent his first full season in the majors last year. It's his second appearance of 1999. But there was a time last year when the Houston bullpen was carrying five left-handers. Five. <laughs> two and two to Jenkins. Trevor Miller was one of the guys that came over to the Astros in that big trade with Detroit back in December of 96 along with Brad Osmus Jose Lima CJ Nikowski and Daryl Ward Doug Brocale Brian Hunter Todd Jones and Orlando Miller went over to Detroit in that deal the comebacker Miller's got it and it is a scoreless inning in relief turned in by Southpaw Trevor Miller Done with five and a half. Three to one, Milwaukee. Fans, take your seat in history during the final year at Milwaukee County Stadium with a season ticket package beginning at only $120. Pretty good deal. Call 414-345-3000 for more information. Bringing down the house. Bringing down the house. Not a talking head song? It's burning down the house. New pitcher for the Brewers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. David Weathers in in relief for the Brewers. Weathers taking over for Bill Pulsifer. David Weathers owns the only Brewer win of 1999 after his stellar opening day performance in St. Louis. Yeah, Weathers threw three and a two thirds. Very strong innings in St. Louis. Gave up three hits, only one run, and struck out a couple of batters. The big statistic that you like to see, particularly in this series, no walks in his last outing. Weathers will work to Hidalgo, Everett, and Molusky here in the Houston sixth inning. That Diamondbacks Braves game is now a final. Randy Johnson and the Diamondbacks all over Atlanta, eight to three. Big unit strikes out 14. Franchise record. Dating all the way back to last year. <laughs> the rich and storied Arizona Diamondbacks history. 0-2 oh on Hidalgo. Brian Williams and former Brewer Doug Henry in the yeah. bullpen for the Astros. One ball and two strikes now to Hidalgo. 
couple of veterans out there in that Houston bullpen. Brian Williams is in his second stint as an Astro. He pitched in Japan last year. And as Brewer fans well know, Doug Henry's been in the big leagues for quite a while. Yeah, did a nice job as the Brewer's closer for a couple of years. Traded over to the Mets. Brewer's got Fernando Vina for Doug Henry. Not a bad deal. You bet. Two balls and two strikes to Hidalgo. Swing and a miss, strike three. Give the governor a harumph. Nothing tricky about that pitch. A fastball right down the middle, and Hidalgo with a big hack. Two strikes. Watch this swing. He's trying to hit this one out of here. Here's Carl Everett now. The numbers on Weathers last year very good after the Brewers picked him up as a free agent picked him up on the waiver wire. About a quarter of the way through the season. Nothing in one on Carl Everett. He's hitless 0 for 2 tonight. Astros have the luxury of having four switch hitters on their roster. Alex Diaz, Glenn Barker, Molesky, and Carl Everett. Not bad. A lot of versatility that way. Got a lot of ways to beat you. Make that five, Caminiti. Yeah, we can't forget about him. Yeah. Checked it. A rumpf once again. Oh, Dave Weathers. A little nasty out of the bullpen tonight, isn't he? I don't think it matters whether it's swinging or on the called strike. This pitch right on the corner. Look at David set it up right on the corner. The glove right there. That's a strike regardless. And that's a called strike three. Good pitch by Weathers. Picking up right where he left off on Monday. Mitch Molusky the batter now. Molusky has singled and struck out tonight. Starts him with a strike. You can close the book on Bill Pulsifer tonight. He went the required five to get the win. The Brewer bullpen can hang on. He'd love to put Pulsifer in the win column tonight. Molesky lifts a fly ball into the corner and left. Jenkins is on the run over there, and he makes the catch. A one, two, three, six turned in by David Weathers out of the Brewer bullpen. We've played six complete. Brewers still lead it three to one. Well, let's check out the new Dodge game reset for tonight. Brewers with a two-run lead heading into the seventh inning. And the Brewers Vina continues his hot hitting with a double and a run scored. Jenkins with a solo blast in the second deck. And Craig Biggio with his first base hit of the year, a leadoff home run on the first pitch of the game. Pitching change for the Astros. They're on their third pitcher of the contest. He is veteran Brian Williams. You can see his numbers. He played. Last year in Japan, he was five and six, 5.12 earned run average in 20 games. A hard throw. You got a lot of pitchers down in that Astro bullpen that can flat out throw the baseball. The Brewers will lead off the top of the seventh with their pitcher slot. It'll be David Weathers. This is Dave's third at bat of the season. Unlikely for a middle reliever in yeah. the first week of the season. That's the case. Weathers, Vigne, and Grissom for the Brewers. Hey, and Dave Weathers is aboard. He can hit. This is Jeff Juden. Weathers hit a home run off of Jeff Juden as a member of the Cincinnati Reds last year. County Stadium. The fastball right down the middle, and David Weathers just slaps it into center field, so the Brewers have their leadoff hitter aboard. Going the second, third time in the game. Here's Nando now, runner aboard for him with nobody out.
Brian Williams was not given much of a chance to make the club coming into spring training. But based on a strong spring he was able to secure that final spot in the bullpen that was up for grabs. Larry Durker and Vern Rule liked his right arm. They liked his experience that he gave that group down there. He was an Astro between the years 1991 and 1994. Made stops in San Diego, Detroit, and Baltimore before pitching in Japan all the last year, as Bill mentioned. And through all that travel, still kept a home in Sugarland, Texas. So uh, he is returning home, so to speak, mm -hmm. to play with the Astros this year. It's a fastball up in the low 90 area. Pretty straight, though. Not a whole lot of movement on the fastball, but it's anytime a fastball is in the 90s, you can get away with a straight one. <laughs> Nothing in two on Fernando Vino. Weathers the runner at first with nobody out. Played in five games this season, and he has at least two hits in all five of them. Yeah, Fernando is red hot. He got off to a slow start in spring training. One of the trade talks were getting Fernando down a little bit, but I'll tell you what, since about 10 days left in spring training, Fernando has really stepped it up and he's got 10 hits already. Doesn't matter two strikes one strike doesn't matter watch Fernando that pitch down in the strike zone and when you're facing a pitcher that throws hard your best chance to hit him is when he gets it down in the zone tough to catch up to that high fastball corner sneak in now for Marquis Grissom who showed bunt he's got a single and a sack bunt to his credit tonight runners at first and second for him. Nobody out. Brewers looking for some punch here in the seventh inning. We'll never have too many runs against an offense like the Astros. Grissom taking 2 0 now. Grissom's first pitch, he was looking to bunt. Bill Garner gave him the green light on the 1 0 count. Let's see what he does 2 0. I guess he's going to go away and let Grissom hit away. Get a pitch he likes, try to ride one out of here. Then he got one. Sure did. Grissom likes the fastball up in the strike zone, but we were just talking about you get the ball in the low to mid 90s, tough to catch up to the ball around mid thigh, I should say around the waist. Get that ball down a little bit, a little bit easier to hit. So to two and one now on Marquise Grissom. Cirillo waiting on deck. From the stretches, Williams at 2 1 home, swung on and driven out to right center. Bell chasing this one. He's not going to catch up to it. It bounces against the track and up against the fence. Weathers being waved home. Vigna right on his tail. A two run double for Marquise Grissom. And the Brewers take their biggest lead of the night 5 1 Milwaukee. Well, we just talked about the high fastball. Marquis got one about six inches lower than the 2 0 pitch. He fouled back. Watch where this pitch is about mid thigh, and wham, right into the gap, goes right with it. And Fernando, with outstanding speed, scores his second run of the ball game all the way from first base and follows David Weathers right on his heels at home plate. Well, it's a good swing that Marquis put on that baseball. Grissom two for four with a couple of runs batted in tonight. Marquise having a good series. He's aboard at second with nobody out. Now it's Cirillo. Little comebacker. Williams knocks it down. Fumbles with it. Throw to first. And they just get him at the bag. 
Well, it's not exactly what Jeff Cirillo wanted to do, but he was able to get Marquise over to third base. Jeff trying to bring those hands in. It looked like a slider out on the end of the bat. I had Williams been able to pick that cleanly. He might have had to play at Marquise at third, but able to get Cirillo at first. So now a fly ball score the Brewers sixth run of the game. Here's Burnitz now. He's one for two tonight. Doubled and scored back in the third. Drove in a run back in the first on a sack fly. High fly ball. Well hit to right. Bell back on this one. He'll have a little room shy of the track. He makes a catch. Tagging up at third base is Grissom. He'll come on in and score. Second RBI sack fly tonight off the bat of Jeremy Burnitz. Three runs here in the inning for the Brewers. They go on top six to one. Well, it's a perfect example of good fundamental baseball. The Brewers have been doing it all night long. Early in the game, Marquise bunted Vina over to third base. And Burnett's able to score him with a fly ball. This time, Cirillo gets Marquise over to third base, and Burnett scores him with another fly ball. Good execution by the Brewers offensively tonight. There's Sean Barry now three runs seven so far for the Brewers and it was all started by the base hit from the pitcher David Weathers. But I tell you again we're only in game five of the season but you'd be hard pressed to find a more valuable player out there position pitcher or otherwise and David Weathers. Yeah, He's done the job. Huh? Base hits he's got the club's only win so far. Oh, two to Barry swung on a missed. A productive inning nonetheless for the Brewers as they got on the board for three runs. Seventh inning stretch at the Astrodome. Brewers on top six to one. Now batter up for Icelandic band Fish Fry Fridays starting on May 14th. Enjoy choice beer battered fillets and all the trimmings Fridays at County Stadium. Plus receive a half price upper deck coupon. Call 933-9000 for information. Well, David Weathers will continue here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And he'll go to work on the number eight and nine then top of the order hitters. Ricky Gutierrez to lead things off. A three run top of the seventh for the Brewers has given them a little bit of cushion tonight. Six to one Milwaukee. This one far from over. Yeah. Broken back grounder to second. Vina's got this one. One pitch and one after Weathers here in the bottom of the seventh. Well, it's always good, particularly late in the ball game, and the team's got the lead. You get that first hitter out in each inning. It makes your job much easier. David Weathers continues to throw the ball very well for the Brewers. He really jammed Gutierrez on that pitch. Pinch hitter now in the pitcher spot. Veteran left-handed hitter Jack Howell will swing it off the bench. Check in the National League scoreboard. Those of you that uh, prematurely predicted the demise of Kevin Brown, take heed. Eight innings, three hits against the high-powered Rocky offense. Kevin Brown and Jeff Shaw combined on a 2 0 shutout win of the Rockies in Los Angeles. Yeah. He's back. He'll be just fine. Darrell Kyle for Colorado threw very well. Two runs in seven innings. Brewers and Astros are the last team going tonight in the National League. Everybody else is done. We told you Arizona beat Atlanta eight to three. Dodgers beating Colorado two zip. Philadelphia five to two winner at Florida. Kurt Schilling improves to two and zero. Oh. Pittsburgh beat the Cubs nine to three was the score there. The Mets edge Montreal four three. It was St. Louis over Cincinnati four to two and San Diego hands the Giants their first loss of the season. Big win there for the Padres. Ball four to Jack Howell. He's aboard with one away. And now it's back to the top of the order at Craig Biggio.
two hundred and ten hits a year ago. Became the first Astro to amass a two hundred hit season. That one was a little surprising yeah. to read. Yeah. Talk about Jose Cruz, the first base coach. Got some pretty good hitters down the line in Houston. Terry Poole. Dickie Thon had a couple of good years here. Yeah. One and two to Biggio. We know that the uh, the cavernous dimensions of this Astrodome, especially before they moved the fences in, really kept a lot of the power numbers down in franchise history. But that really should not have affected the base hits. If anything, the AstroTurf gives you another couple of base hits because the ball scoots through the infield so quickly. Swing and a miss, strike three, harumph. Boy, that's a nice slider that time by David Weathers. Got to hit him with a fastball and two consecutive sliders. Watch how late this ball breaks. Looks like a fastball, but then it disappears right on the corner, down around the knees. You can't do much with that pitch. Second strikeout for Dave Weathers in an inning and two thirds. And that's Derek Bell. Now that's what every pitcher tries to do on his breaking ball. Get it to break as late as possible so that the hitter can't determine what it is. Because you're a hitter, the earlier a ball breaks, the easier it is to recognize and the easier it is to hit. Check that strikeout total for Weathers. That is third. Three strikeouts for David in an inning and two thirds. Well, he is locked on. Yeah, you can see it in his eyes. He knows what he wants. He's very confident. I remember last year talking to David Weathers late in the season. The team was in Denver, talking about how happy he was to be a Brewer. Now, he had always enjoyed playing in Milwaukee. He enjoys the atmosphere at County Stadium. And we're talking about a guy who's pitched for the Yankees, among other teams. And he told me honestly, if everything's the same, everything remaining equal, I'd rather be a brewer. Yeah. There's certainly less media pressure in Milwaukee than there is in New York. I don't think there's any place that's more media intensive than New York. Two balls and a strike on Derek Bell. Plus, it's just a good town to live in. The guy brings a family out in Milwaukee and. Nothing like it. Yeah, you should know, huh? Yeah. You stayed in Milwaukee even after you were traded to the Angels. A lot of players did. Right. Two and two to Derek Bell. Good town. Oh, Milwaukee. I'm itching to get back home. Starting the season with nine on the road in 12 days. Not getting back home for the home opener until mid April. Highly unusual a swing and a miss strike three. Dave Weathers just blowing it right to heck past people. Four strikeouts in two innings. And a seven. Brewers on top six to one. He's sitting on seven fourteen. Here's the pitch by Downey. Swing it. There's a drive to Nick Tanabell. That ball goes. Is that it? <laughs> my God, my headsets are rattling, man. Well, kids ages 8 to 12 enter to be a Milwaukee's Pickles little big leaguer. Get your entry at the Milwaukee's Pickle Display of Participating Grocers. Receive Brewers tickets, an autographed ball, and a photograph of your youth team on the field. See display for details. <laughs> Told you I'd never do that again. <laughs> New pitcher for the Astros. He is former Brewer right-hander Doug Henry. Jarred the wax out of my ears. Thank you. <laughs> David Nilsson leading things off in the Brewer eighth. Nilsson, Valentin, and Jenkins scheduled against Doug Henry here. <laughs> oh, Milo. Yeah, Milo had a nice, you know, nice visit with Milo Hamilton today before the ball game here in the booth. A personable guy, huh? Telling a couple jokes. Oh, you bet. Well, he's in a good mood. Talking about you know, different pitchers and with the Brewers and Astros. Oh, 
kind of a fraternity, isn't it? The old broadcast group kind of help each other it is, out. It is for most. It is for most of us. Yeah. I think uh, back in the day of uh, some of our older contemporaries, there was uh, maybe some uh, friendly competition. Mm -hmm. Ball and two strikes on David Nilsson. Tried to check it, but he went around. Register the strike after Doug Henry. Well, Doug Henry goes predominantly with a fastball and the splitter. This time he goes with a slider down and in, and David can't hold up. That'll go down as a swinging strikeout. Some friendly competition, huh? I think so. I think uh, there was, uh, from what I've read, there were a lot of guys that, that back in the day talking about the 30s, 40s, like to be known as the uh, greatest baseball announcer of the game. Red Barber, Mel Ott, perhaps. The huh? days of the uh, Allen Carey. Carries in, uh, yeah, absolutely. They invented the industry. Mm -hmm. Nothing in one on Jose Valentin. A great book that was written a few years ago called Voices of the Game. A gentleman named Kurt Smith that has ties in Milwaukee. He's known by a lot of folks around County Stadium. It is a comprehensive, a, a huge work chronicling uh, just about everybody that's ever donned a microphone in a major league arena. Mm -hmm. One ball and two strikes on Jose Valentin. That's amazing when you talk about guys like Milo Hamilton and some of the uh, some of the veteran announcers that are still working, the likes of Vince Scully, Ernie Harwell. Vince Scully was the voice of the Brooklyn Dodgers for crying out loud. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? Yeah, you talk about transcending generation after generation after generation of baseball fan. Well, you know, Yuke's pushing pushing 30 years, right? You bet. A new era. Two balls and two strikes to Valentin. Full count now, three and two. Ball four to Jose. Valentin on board on base for the first time tonight. That'll bring up Jeff Jenkins. Jenkins homered in the second against the starter Chris Holt. It was Chris Holt for five, Trevor Miller for an inning. Brian Williams worked one on loan from CNBC. And now it's Doug Henry to work the eighth. Valentin running had an enormous jump. Throw down a second is still in time to get him, and Jose can't believe it. Boy, it looked like Jose was going to steal that bag easily. A great throw to second by rookie catcher Mitch Molusky. Well, watch the release. Very quick. You see him square his shoulders up, and a good play by... Ricky Gutierrez. A lot of times a shortstop or second baseman will try and reach for the baseball. I tell you, that ball will get to second base much quicker if you let it get there to the bag instead of reaching for it and bring it back. Let me tell you, Jose's got a good grief, a good uh, beef there, rather. He's got a pretty good gripe. I'll find the right word. You trust me. Swing and a miss. Good argument. Good argument. He got the hand in there. The tag was on his head. No, he knows he was safe. Well, Brewers still don't have a stolen base this year. They caught twice. Check that. Burnett stole third. Jenkins with another drive. This one hit out to left center. Get out of here! Oh, Jenkins flexing his muscles down here in Texas. You go opposite field, boy. Yeah, get along. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there aren't too many cheap home runs, or you don't see many home runs, period, to the opposite field here at the Astrodome, but Jenkins really swinging the bat well. 
My goodness. Second home run of the ball game. He pulled the first one. This one oppo shot in the left center. All right, look at the extension. Oh Good yeah. Backswing finishes high. Well, Jim Lefebvre were talking about how much quicker he is now that his hands are starting a bit lower, and I have to agree. That is just a bomb out there to left center. Believe it. And David Weathers in his fourth plate appearance in 1999. <laughs> hey, Jeff feeling pretty good tonight. Mongo like. Three and 0 to Weathers. Well, Jenkins missed about three weeks of spring training. Everybody was concerned that he might have lost his stroke a little bit, but fear not. Look at David Weathers getting on base again. You can't stop David Weathers with the bat. You can only hope to contain him. <laughs> <laughs> Seven one Brewers after Jenkins second home run of the night. Fernando Vina now with Weathers aboard and two away. I'd like to say hello to some fans listening back at home. Sally Melius and Gary Went are here from Fond du Lac today. Yeah. And Sally and Gary wanted to say hello to everybody watching back in Wisconsin tonight. They picked a good one to come and watch, didn't yes, they? Yes, indeed. Of course, it's not over yet. Two more innings. Houston has six outs left. They can put some runs up on the board quick. Lee. One ball and one strike on Fernando. Can't believe they're not holding Weathers at first. Broken back, flare out to second, and Biggio's there for it. That'll do her in the eighth, not before another run for the Brewers. Mr. Jenkins makes it 7 1 Milwaukee. Bottom of the eighth inning, Brewers on top 7 to 1. Couple of defensive changes for the Brewers as we head to the bottom of the eighth. You're looking at one of them, Mark Loretta, in at first base in place of Sean Berry. And there's the other. Rich Becker takes over for uh, the left fielder, Jeff Jenkins, who's had himself a pretty decent night. Yeah. And so is he. Stormy Weathers to begin his third inning of work tonight. He has struck out four in two innings. He'll go to work on Bagwell, Caminiti, and Hidalgo here. Manager Larry Durker doing a little lineup card scratching tonight. He doesn't look all that concerned about his offense. Not putting any runs together, at least in the first week of the season. He knows as well as everybody that his Houston team is going to start hitting sooner or later. Bagwell's one for three tonight. He's singled against Pulsifer in the fifth. Bill Pulsifer, your pitcher of record, stands to be the winner this evening. Right. Oh, and two to Bagwell. Bagwell struck out a couple of times last night. But the Brewers can get out of here after tomorrow afternoon's game with the likes of BGO, Bell, Bagwell, Caminiti still not going gangbusters offensively. They will have timed this visit to Houston just right. Loretta chases the pop up and can't make the catch. 
it might be a very good time to be here in Houston. I think everyone will agree that sooner or later Bagwell and Biggio, Bell, Caminiti, this guy right here, they're going to get it all together and start putting up runs just like they did last year. Scored a ton of runs. Ball and two strikes on Jeff Bagwell. Fastball stays high. Craig Biggio has started 1998, one for his first 14, the one coming today, the leadoff home run. Derek Bell's got a couple of hits today. He's five for his first 14. He's heated up. And a swing and a miss strike, three by Bagwell. Five Ks for Weathers. Well, this looks like a fastball. He threw him a steady diet of off-speed pitches. That slider lulled him to sleep and then slipped a fastball right down the middle. The clock up here at the Astrodome getting David Weathers at about 91 miles an hour in his fastball. We were talking about it last night with Chad Fox. They had him registered at 97. I had a chance to talk to Billy Spires who pinch hit against Fox. He says he was throwing every bit of 97. We were kind of making a joke about it up here in the booth last night that that gun might be a little fast. But Billy Spires was saying the Fox was throwing hard. A lot of guys on the Brewer bench last night were convinced that that was a legit 97 as well. Yeah. One and two to Caminiti. There's Billy Spires, ex Brewer. And inducted into the Clemson University Hall of Fame in the offseason. Thought I'd get that in there. Still yeah. waiting for my uh, my <laughs> introduction into that. Line pass Cirillo into the corner and left. Caminiti takes that corner at first. Looks like he hobbled into second base. He gets there with a one out double here in the eighth. He's had a rough night. He twisted his ankle on that Jeremy Burnett stolen base, then busted a bat over his knee. So Caminiti, a true warrior. He plays the game like it is meant to be played, hard, full out all the time. And puts a good swing on that fastball. Here's Richard Hidalgo now, runner in scoring position for the Astros and one away. Popped him up. Grissom has to come in from center. He gets there plenty of time two away. Checking the American League scoreboard tonight. We've given you some of the details and the goings on in the American. There's a pretty good look at it right there. Yeah. Oakland leads Seattle 4 nothing and John Jaha has hit his first major league home run in a uniform other than the Brewers. Yeah. Good to see Jaha in the major leagues huh. Good Better. guy. Hope he stays healthy. Jaha homers in Seattle for the Oakland A's tonight. Anaheim walloping Texas. It's 9 nothing Angels. A game in Tampa Bay's a final now. Boston hung on to the 5 to 3 win. The Red Sox remain undefeated in the East End Division. The Mariners having a tough time putting runs up on the board in the first week. Unusual. Yeah. That team's supposed to be all hit, no pitch. Yep. One ball and two strikes on Carl Everett. Batting with Cam and Idiot second and two away. Oh, general admission. <laughs> well hit out to right, chases Bernitz. It'll score Caminiti from second. Everett holds up at second base, an RBI double to make it 7-2 to two Brewers. Well, Carl Everett able to almost look like a low pitch down in the zone he just golfed it into the gap in right field so the Astros able to put together a couple of doubles here in the eighth inning. 
That's a pretty good two-strike hitting from Carl Everett. Here's Mitch Molusky now. You got to figure this to be Dave Weathers' last inning. He worked at three batters in the sixth, four batters in the seventh, working on his fifth hitter here in the eighth inning. Well, Phil Garner knows that he can stretch Weathers out quite a bit, but he pitched Monday. He pitched almost four innings and was unable to be used for a couple of days. Phil doesn't want to box himself in like that. He'd love to be able to go out there and throw De Los Santos for an inning, perhaps. Get Plunk out there. That's how you loosen yourself up, you beat yourself up. <laughs> Popped him up. Valentin calling for it. And that'll do it in the eighth. A run for the Astros in the eighth inning. We've played eight complete at the Astrodome. Brewers on top by five. We'll be with you tomorrow here on MSC, a 1.30 start for the Brewers and Astros as they wrap up this three-game series. Join us tomorrow at 1.30. MSC, your Brewers connection, celebrating 10 years of sports. Doug Henry left into work tonight. Grissom, Cirillo, and Burnitz for the Brewers. Tomorrow, back to the opening day starters for both teams. Rafael Roque for the Brewers. 19-game winner from a year ago, Shane Reynolds for Houston. One of the great pitching matchups of 1997 came when the Astros went down to Florida to play the Marlins. And Shane Reynolds worked in a start against Marlins starter Pat Rapp. Became the Reynolds rap game. Reynolds rap. <laughs> I'm interested to see how Rafael Roque comes out tomorrow afternoon. He is pitching fairly well in St. Louis, but a couple of rain delays only allowed him to pitch two innings. Was not able to go out for his third inning. Well, really, you got to figure this to be Roque's. Really have to consider it his first start. Well, he wasn't able to pitch too much. Two balls and a strike on Marquise Grissom. Grounded back up the middle and through. Boy, Grissom with three hits in each of his last three at bats. Right, good to see Marquis heating up again. Slowed off, slowed down a little bit out of spring training when the team got to St. Louis, but really swinging the bat well in the last couple of nights. Fastball out over the plate, just whacks it up the middle. That's a big key for the Brewers this year, Marquis Grissom. Well, the early returns are in, and they're all very good on Marquis. His three hits tonight. Improve his 1999 line to eight for 23. Right. Jeff Cirillo, the batter, now he takes strike one. Another guy off to a good start. Jeff's hit in all four of the games so far this year. Prior to tonight's, he's sitting on an 0 for 3 currently. Chance to cash in and run that hitting streak to five. Brewers had Marquise Grissom aboard in the fifth inning to start the inning. At that point, they led it three to one. It looked like Marquise had a couple of opportunities to run against the starter, Chris Holt, but chose to stay home at first base. A five run lead, you really don't expect Marquise to be taking off, particularly with two strikes on Cirillo. 
Allen allows Cyril to be as selective as he can. Ball and two strikes to Cirillo. Got him swinging. You can see the look on Cirillo's face, a little bit upset with himself, or can't believe he swung through the fastball right down the middle. Just below the belt. That's normally a pitch that Cirillo's going to shoot to right field. Here's Burnitz now, one away. Grissom still aboard at first. Jeff will probably look at be looking at videotape tonight, tomorrow. Those at bats today, one against Doug Henry, the at bat yesterday against Billy Wagner. Ball and no strikes on Burnitz. Videotape machine has become a very popular tool in Major League Baseball, particularly for the hitters and pitchers, obviously. Jeff Cirillo, one of the guys that really studies those film very closely to see if there's a flaw in his swing. Pitchers watch their deliveries very carefully, pitch selection. Got a piece of them. Second hit batsman tonight. David Nilsson was hit by a pitch back in the sixth inning. Trevor Miller clipped him on the leg. <laughs> trying to get in on the hands of Jeremy up in the strike zone. That's the book on Jeremy. It didn't even look like it hit him, though. It looked like it glanced off his forearm, but with that shot that we got, it didn't look like it hit him at all. There's Mark Loretta now. Runners at first and second, one away. Mark Loretta was out there and recorded the final out of the game last night as a pinch hitter. Bounced out to third against Billy Wagner. That after the Brewers looked like they had mounted a late chance. Here's Loretta with runners at first and second. David Nilsson on deck behind Loretta. Only one away here. But we get another run in the ninth. Never have enough. We're going to have to deal with the top of that order one more time. Twenty four thousand forty nine on hand here tonight. Thirty one thousand last night. Loretta with the drive well hit out to right center it's slicing away from Carl Everett but he's there to make the catch Grissom will tag up at second and get into third. Well Mark Loretta notorious for his slow starts always comes out of spring training swing the bat very well but for some reason in April has a tough time stringing hits together he'll get hot. In a couple of weeks, those lazy fly balls in the center field, right field, are going to turn into line drives. Runners at the corners with two away now for Nilsson. Brewers on top of the Astros, seven to two, batting here in the top of the ninth inning. Home opener coming April 16th. A weekend series with the rival Chicago Cubs. And that series followed up immediately with a series against the St. Louis Cardinals. That McGuire Sosa mania that swept through County Stadium last September will make an early return to County Stadium in 1999. Good way to start out, huh? You bet. Ticket sales are brisk, just from what we understand it, back home. Yeah, just the way it ended. Opening day against the Cubs. My goodness. Be 
a few people having a good time at that ball game. I yeah, hopefully the weather's going to be nice. This will be the last year that we have to worry about the weather. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of crazy people at County Stadium. People from Chicago, all over the place. Cub fans, Brewer fans. Should be an interesting afternoon. I got to tell you, that's the one thing about those games that kind of, kind of irks me a little bit. These Cub fans make a pretty darn good showing at County Stadium. <laughs> That hurts you? It does. It bothers me just a little bit. Huh? You know, if Sosa hits a home run and the place gets just as loud as it would if Burnett's hit a home run. That ain't right. Well, Brewer fans are even rooting for Sosa. Okay, Sosa is a bad example. Yeah. Uh, Glen Allen Hill. <laughs> you know, we don't need to hear when Glen Allen Hill hits a home run in our yard. Nilsson wraps one pass. Biggio into right. That'll score Grissom from third, eight to two. Brewers. The Brewers coming out slugging tonight. As we mentioned, it would be important for the Brewers to get off to an early start. They were able to do that, scoring single runs in the first three innings, and the floodgates have opened. The Brewers open up their six run lead again. Burnitz and Nilsson aboard now for Valentin. Eight runs on 13 hits for the Brewers so far tonight. The Brewers had 13 hits in the last game in St. Louis, but were only able to put up four runs. A little bit different tonight. Yeah. We like the distribution a little bit better tonight. Conclusion of tomorrow's ball game, the Brewers load up an airplane and head up to Montreal, where they don't wear hats like that one. It's a good hat, though. Ten to one, he drives a, a Dodge truck. You think? Yep. Popped him up. Caminiti's under this one, and that will end the Brewer ninth. Brewers do tack on an insurance run here on the RBI single by David Nilsson. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for Houston. Brewers lead at eight to two. Well, the Brewers are three outs away from their second win of the season, and it is a similar formula that delivered their first great relief pitching by David Weathers. A lot of timely offense. The long ball has been a part of tonight's attack as well. And we head to the bottom of the ninth with the Brewers in front comfortably. Pretty good night for Marquise Grissom. Three base hits and four official at bats. Ricky Gutierrez leads off against David Weathers. Gutierrez followed by the pitcher spot, then Craig Biggio. Yeah, I'll tell you, the uh, picking player of the game honors tonight is no easy task. David Weathers might garner some votes. Jeff Jenkins. About Pulsiver. Picked up a big. Well, he actually had a good outing when the Brewers really needed it. Yep. A good start, five strong innings, allowing only one run. Fernando Vina with another multiple hit night. That's a team player of the game. It's a great idea, Bill. Boy, is that fence post or what? <laughs> That is some spineless voting right there. <laughs> now, David Weathers is going to have every chance to finish this ball game after we got through telling everybody that he'd likely only go three tonight. We got Mike Myers up in the bullpen. Does Phil Garner? He wants this one bad. It scatters the Houston bullpen as it's fouled away. Two balls and two strikes on Gutierrez. There's Mike. <laughs> Weathers out of the wine. Here's the 2 2 home to Gutierrez. It's one hop to Vina, who's playing in short right. One away. Oh. He'll get some votes up here in the booth. 
Jenkins with a couple of home runs tonight. Mr. Jenkins, big night tonight. Pinch hitter is Bill Spires. Where is it that Bill Spires went to college, Bill? I believe it was Clemson. Clemson University? Yep, Clemson huh. Tiger. Yep. <laughs> Nobody on one away for Spires, the pinch hitter. Bill Spires, Bill Schroeder, Tim Tuffle. Yep. Give me another big leaguer that went to Clemson. Jimmy Key, Denny Jimmy Walling. Key. Denny Walling, all right. Yeah. Denny Walling, a former uh, Astro Shall third baseman. Stop? Can you keep going? There were some more <laughs> players that came out of Clemson and didn't spend quite as much time as the others. Okay. Well, let me tell you, that's a pretty impressive list. Yeah. Tried to check it. Certainly went around a ball and two strikes now to Bill Spires. Brewers really took the crowd out of this ball game early. Again, just under 25,000 on fan on hand here at the Astrodome. But the Brewers put up single runs in the first, second, and third innings and have not trailed tonight. The Astros pulled even at one apiece after Craig Biggio's leadoff home run in the bottom half of the first. But that is as close as they have gotten since the opening pitch was thrown. It's been on Milwaukee. to put the kiss of death on anything but the Brewers have been playing just stellar defense in the first week of the season committing only one error and that was a questionable error in itself in St. Louis charged to Jeff Cirillo that's Could right on either way 2 2 to Spires slapped a shortstop Valentin's got it throw gets him by plenty two away <laughs> So the Astros have their last chance tonight. Comes to the plate in the form of Craig Biggio. said this in St. Louis on opening night and it it really holds you in more water tonight. If you told David Weathers that after five games of the season he'd have four plate appearances he'd say you're nuts. Lined into the corner and foul. They'd have four plate appearances a base hit score a run get a win and if he finishes this inning he gets a save. Not a bad week. Yeah, that's a pretty good week's work, all right. For a guy that's your long man who really doesn't get a whole lot of activity, unless the pitcher, the starting pitcher, isn't able to go too deep into the ball game. But Phil Garner is very glad that he's got David Weathers. Oh, two to be Joe swung on and missed. Can I get a harump for David Weathers tonight? Another great relief outing by Dave Weathers and the Brewers have earned their second win of 1999 a convincing eight to two decision over the Astros. Stick around Bill and I will be back to recap right after this.